Guess what? Mill not. Brand new label and a new low price. Mill not. That's what? Mill not. 65 degrees, the current temperature, and the time in five seconds will be 1045. Stay tuned for Howard Miller. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum presents The Howard Miller Show. Now here with music on records is Howard Miller. Thank you very much, Joe Foss. And once again from Chicago for Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum, welcome to our daily program. We're indeed uh, pleased today to return to these microphones of CBS and across the country and speaking to you from Cleveland and Ohio from our studios there of WGAR. One of the great inspirational forces, I think, in life today, a fellow by the name of Fred Lowry, who despite the fact that he lost the greater part of his vision when he was just an infant of two down in Texas, and despite the fact that he has had to face this affirmity all through life, has shown to the world a pure and wonderful courage that has made him one of show business's greatest performers. We have a brand new DECA album which Fred Lowry has just uh, had released, and we're going to be very pleased to not only talk to Fred about his life and about his story, but also to play one of the selections from the new DECA release. You're going to meet Fred in just about three minutes after we listen to a new June Valley record just released called The Street of Memories. The Street of Memory is a brand new Victor release featuring, of course, the girl singer June Valley, a young lady who made her first name and fame on a television show and then on a song called Crying in the Chapel. And since then, while hit records have been few and far between for June Valley, she is certainly one of our fine young talents in the business today. Let me make a suggestion to you, this being a Tuesday. I don't know what your lot in life happens to be, what you're planning to do. Maybe it's to go to the beach or the picnic groves. Maybe it's just to work all day, either in the office or in the home. Whatever you do, let me suggest that your companion piece all day be Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. You know, there's something delightfully satisfying about Wrigley Spearmint, whether you choose it to idle away some of the tedium of everyday life, or whether you use it to sort of refresh your mouth and your breath, or whether you use it to aid digestion. Regardless of what course or tack you take for the privilege of chewing Wrigley Spearmint, 
it'll certainly satisfy. So I hope today, if it's convenient for you, when you go out and do some of the grocery shopping, Mama, you'll pick up a couple of packs of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. It's always delicious, delightful, and refreshing, wholesome, and pure. And remember, you can give it to the kids just as often as you want. And now that most of the schools are out across the country, you, of course, have that additional chore, Mama, of keeping the kids satisfied and happy all day. Let Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum help you. It really does keep kids pacified. Doesn't spoil their appetite and yet satisfies the between the meals craving. But you make certain that you ask for it by that name, Wrigley Spearmint. Let's go over to Cleveland, Ojo now, one of the great states. I guess they call that the state of presidents, don't they? It's given more presidents, I think, to anyone else. But a visitor in that state today is a fellow by the name of Fred Lowry, who ordinarily is associated with radio station WISH down in Indianapolis, where he whistles and plays phonograph records. Fred, how's things in Cleveland? Well, good morning, Howard. They, everything is just wonderful here in Cleveland, Ohio. It's always been uh, one of my favorite cities. Everyone has uh, been so nice to me. And this, by the way, Howard, is the town where my recording of Indian Love Call got started several years ago. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. Now, you're using the facilities of WGAR up there. I hope that you will express my grateful thanks to all the boys who are participating in this show with you and me. I certainly will. They're a grand bunch of fellows here at WGAR. Everyone's very, very nice. And, Howard, they love your program over here. Thank you. Fred, what takes you to um, Cleveland when your home base is actually Indiana? Well, I'm giving a concert tonight down in Lakeside, Ohio, which is about uh, 85 miles from here. And uh, the uh, IPA, the International Platform Association, is meeting there, having an annual meeting there. They're the people, Howard, who build shows for uh, school boys and girls in high schools, colleges. And yes. also they have, they sponsor a lot of lecturers, uh, uh, all your name lecturers. And so I'm giving a concert for them tonight, and I'd like to perhaps next winter and next spring do... Uh, a lot of shows for uh, school boys and girls, you know? Yes. Well, Lakeside is a great vacationing resort, isn't it, Fred? That's right, uh, Howard. Uh, we enjoy uh, swimming around there. My wife, Gracie, and my son, Scooter, just uh, we love to go out in the water and swim three or four hours, and that's one way of keeping your health, you know? Yes. <laughs> Fred, uh, for the most part, you have devoted your attention through the years to um, being a part of great dance bands. I think it was probably Vincent Lopez as much as anybody else who gets credit for your discovery, does he not? Well, yes, uh, I suppose uh, Vincent Lopez coupled with Horace Height. Yes, of course, later. With the two bands, uh, I, I spent 12 years in, in uh, orchestras before I decided to go out on my own, so to speak, and have my own club and nightclubs and what few theaters uh, we have left. And uh, now today, the medium, of course, uh, uh, nightclubs and hotel spots. And uh, I do enjoy doing a disc jockey show over at Wish in Indianapolis, and it, it, it affords me the opportunity to have a little home life, and I can still sure. get around the entire United States and, and work also. Like this week, my record, is, my show is uh, taped over there. Yes. Fred, how do you account for the fact that so few bands today use a whistler, and in the old days, it was uh, pretty stead. I mean, almost all the bands carried a whistler, certainly the old Ted Weems, Vincent Lopez, Horace Height. Is that because of the absence of men talented in this particular line of music? One hundred percent, Howard. There would be a lot more whistlers that uh, would be working today in bands if they were good enough. And for instance, I have a pupil uh, that is going to uh, audition for Vincent Lopez next fall, and I'm, I'm pretty sure Vince will take him because uh, Vincent has been looking for a whistler ever since I left his band. This could be the rebirth of Fred Lowry. <laughs> well, you know, I have noticed the trend in the business recently has been for some of these bands to add uh, instruments of deviation, such as a Hammond electric organ, or a harpsichord or a novacord, or most recently, um, they have uh, turned probably to uh, a harp. Now, doesn't this serve a purpose? I mean, doesn't whistling serve the same purpose, a transitional bridge between one selection to another when you seg? That's right. You see, uh, instead of using uh, the piano to, to uh, segue from one key to the other, they could use a whistle. Like I used to, uh, in the Lopez band, I used to change keys for the singer to come in and just whistle, whistle a few bars of Nola, because that was Vincent's theme song. Yes. Just before the show went on the air, you were describing to me the middle part of the William Tell Overture, and you whistled it for me. That's right. uh, would you be good enough to do that for our audience across the lines of the CBS network? Well, this is the, uh, the fiddle part, the middle part of the William Tell, the finale, that is. Yeah. Yeah. 
no one down the line, you know. <laughs> well, that gives you almost as much exercise for your mouth as chewing Wrigley's sperm and chewing. <laughs> they, 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 they work hand in hand, Howard. You know, someday I would like to slip you a wad of uh, Wrigley's sperm and have you whistle a concert and see what happens. Well, I tell you, it, it, it certainly would keep the whistle real oiled up, so to speak, for uh, for me to whistle as many numbers as I wanted to. It Good sure old Wrigley's sperm. Fred, who gave uh, this title to your album, Walking Along, Kicking the Leaves? That's a, a nice title. Paul Coyne of uh, Decca Records in New York, he uh, had the idea of since whistling was, well, kind of a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very American as, as, as anything could be, of course. And, uh, uh, when you think of whistling, you think about a boy walking down the street or out in the forest, like a boy scout or a girl scout. Anyone's very, very happy. They like to get next to nature, you know? Uh huh. So, uh, um, Paul thought that was, it might be a good idea to, uh, have a, have a boy and a girl arm in arm. Just uh, kind of walking along through the forest, kicking the leaves, and they whistle the songs that uh, they, in other words, they dream of traveling. Yes. And that, that's, I think that's the whole theme of it. Yes. Well, she probably hasn't inspired him for anything greater than uh, just whistling at this stage of the game. They probably just met. Is that the idea? <laughs> <laughs> Fred, I would like to just arbitrarily pick one of the things out of the album that you have recorded. You've got so many fine things. The Muna Kura is one of my favorites, and the Faraway Places, Sleepy Lagoon, Moon Love, and so forth. Do you mind if I just select Tennessee Waltz because this happens to be one of my old favorites? Well, I wish you would, Howard. I appreciate it. All right. Let me give a good plug to it, then. This is from the Decca album, Walking Along, Kicking the Leaves, featuring Fred Lowry whistling with the orchestra of Owen Bradley. And the very pretty standard by this time, we can acknowledge it as such, called the Tennessee Waltz. Fred Lowry with a swell selection from his new Decca album, Walking Along, Kicking the Leaves. And, of course, you recognize the familiar theme, Tennessee Waltz. Fred, I'm always curious, when a whistler does a concert, I have seen you on many television and heard you on radio shows where you do one or two selections, but where you do a concert, isn't this a tremendous hardship to your nervous system to stand there and whistle for this many selections right in a row? Well, uh, you think of more than just whistling. You think of trying to break up the patter where you won't whistle too many songs at one time. In other words, I whistle a song, and then I talk about five minutes about how I happen to uh, get into show business and uh, the different uh, big stars that I have seen come up through the ranks of uh, auditioning for bands. For instance, Perry Como auditioned for the band when I was with Vincent Lopez, and Art Carney worked with Horace Height when I was in the band. So I can talk about ten minutes about these people, you know? Uh, what, and, Lopez didn't like Como's voice? Oh, yes, but the, the budget... <laughs> with, <laughs> 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 Thank 
Thank you, and good night, Howard Miller. Yeah, <laughs> Fred, it's always a pleasure. I don't have to tell you that because we're good buddy buddies, and uh, thank you for making another appearance for Wrigley's Sperm and Chewing Gum. Well, Howard, it's really my pleasure, and I will thank you very much for putting me into business when you had me on your show last time talking about our little teaching record called Fine. Whistling is Fun. I hope you sold a lot of them. And you say hello to your wife and youngster, will you? I sure will, Howard. Thanks very much, Fred Lowry. Thank you. That was Fred Lowry speaking from Cleveland, Ohio. Thanks again to WGAR for originating that portion of our show, and this is Howard Miller from Chicago for Wrigley's Sperm. We'll see you tomorrow. Here's Joe Foss. Howard's guest tomorrow, Louis Carter, on the CBS Radio Network. WBBM Chicago serves two full glasses, 12-ounce king-size bottles of Coca-Cola, sign of good taste.